Thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And now we're going to be turning our attention to an exciting new industry in Texas. It is the olive oil industry. And I'm joined by John Gambini from Texas Hill Country Olive Company. Thanks for joining us on Central Texas Gardener. Thank you, Tom. Well, it's, to me, it's genuinely exciting to think about, uh, alongside our great Texas wine industry, uh, the olive oil industry growing here. You're the largest producer uh, of olive oil in the state. You have the largest uh, acreage. No, I'm the largest certified organic olive ah, oil tree okay. in Okay, well, that Texas. counts, too. Um, and tell me why you got into this industry. What was it that was attractive about it? I had, um, have always wanted to start a small family farm and uh, get my family involved in it, working day to day, so that really a business that could last for generation after generation. Mm -hmm. Olive trees live to be thousands of years old. Right. Well, and it, it, there's a long history of uh, olive orchards passing from uh, hand to uh, father to son for many thousands of years, and uh, there are highly prized little patches of land all around the world. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, you're in Dripping Springs. Yes, sir. Uh, and you're, you have 16 acres of, of trees. That's correct. Wow. And uh, we, we have, uh, we'll be talking about your products, but there is a wide variety of, of products associated that, uh, with the olives that you, you're producing right now. But I want to get started by talking about um, olive oil itself. One thing that I learned recently that really shocked me is that, and I've been buying olive oil for years, and when I go to the store, I assume when it's labeled olive oil, that's what it is. But that I've just learned that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, absolutely. It was an article done by the Arston Chronicle uh, many months ago, and um, UC Davis had done a study out of California and it turned out that 69% of the olive oils in the grocery stores have been adulterated in some form or fashion. And the dirty little secret is really Europe, where most of the oil comes from, uh, does not grow enough olives to produce enough oil for all of their consumption. Okay, so they're, they're mixing in canola oil and other oils? Exactly. Ah, okay, so what we think is the super healthy oil that we're uh, using, not necessarily so. Not necessarily. Okay, well that's a little depressing to think about if you've been using it for years <laughs> and years and years. Yeah. However, uh, we do know that we can buy the real thing here in Texas, right? You <laughs> absolutely can. There's many fine growers here in Texas besides myself, mm -hmm. um, but we're all dedicated to producing premium, extra virgin, pure olive oil. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to uh, those of us who really appreciate that fine taste of, of good olive oil, this is exciting news. Now, typically, where are your products found? I, I know that farmer's markets probably are uh, a, a great option for that. Yeah, we consider ourselves one of the premium producers, if not the premium producer in Texas. And we're primarily at farmer's markets in uh, four major cities, Austin, Dallas, Houston, and Waco right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do tons of festivals. We do about 65 festivals a year. Wow. Uh, and you can find us there. Uh, Central Market actually co uh, carries my Sola Stella, mm -hmm. uh, olive oil, and my traditional balsamic vinegar. Okay, well that's terrific. And, and, and speaking of festivals, I understand that your oils are winning awards. Absolutely. We've competed uh, three years in a row and what used to be the largest olive oil competition out in LA. Uh, over 600 olive oils from 23 countries compete each year. That's and cool. we've won medals <laughs> three years in a row. Well, in the wine industry, they would toast to that, and, and I guess you would dip to that in the yeah. olive oil industry. Absolutely, you dip to it. <laughs> okay, very good. Now, uh, let's talk about some of the terminology. What does virgin and extra virgin mean when we're talking about olive oil? Well, extra virgin, which is the highest quality oil and the one that's the most healthy for you, is primarily oil that has free acid uh, measurement of less than 1%, typically 0.08% and less. And the lower that number is, the better it is for you. And it's, it's also oil in the United States. We've made it uh, a designation that it's oil that's been pressed uh, from the olives within 72 hours of picking. Okay. And I understand that's your practice, is you, you harvest uh, in the day and then you press at night. That's <clears throat> correct. Yeah. 
So absolutely fresh in that. So it's not just an indicator of what's in the, the olive, but it's also an indicator of freshness, really. Freshness, uh, and when you get to know a grower like myself, then you, you know that that freshness is going to be there. Mm -hmm. But the polyphenols and the antioxidants in the oil, because it was pressed so early like that, mm -hmm. is what makes it so healthy for you. Okay. Now, you know, John, that a lot of folks out there are very excited about growing their own food nowadays. That's right. Fruit trees, you name it. People want to have food produced in their backyard. Now, olive trees can be grown in anybody's backyard in Central Texas, I'm assuming. That's correct. But uh, harvesting the fruit and getting something from the fruit is a little different. For the home gardener, um, what do you recommend for use of the, the, the fruit once it does start producing? Yeah, because it takes so many olives to make a gallon of olive oil and, and the proper equipment to press it with, we really highly recommend that they just brine the olives and make table olives out of them. It's a mm -hmm. fairly simple process that can be easily done, mm -hmm. and you can find the instructions online anywhere. Okay, and so for uh, pressing though, what's involved in that from your perspective? Because this is a big operation. Absolutely. Uh, pressing is, it takes uh, on average 2,000 pounds of olives to create 45 gallons of oil. Some olive varieties produce more oil, some mm -hmm. produce less. But a general rule of thumb is 40 to 45 gallons. Uh, it's, you have to have a hammer mill to cut and slice the olives into paste. It's then transferred into a malaxer to begin the separation process. Then it goes from there into a centrifuge, and we have a horizontal centrifuge. And we centrifuge. all have centrifuges at home. Everybody <laughs> has one at their house. <laughs> Where the final separation of oil and water and paste occurs. Right. And once you have the oil come out of that machine, then you've got pure premium extra virgin oil. Okay. All right. Well, it, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing I'm going to be doing in my kitchen, but it sure sounds like something I'd go out and, and, and try to search out in the stores or actually visit you. And it's something that people can do, of course, right? Right. We're open uh, six days a week, every mm -hmm. day except Tuesday. We have a 6,000 square foot mill house, mm -hmm. tasty room, bistro cafe, re retail store. And we also have a little art gallery. Just like the wine industry. Exactly. Yes. And we want you to come out. We're open 11 to 6 mm -hmm. and uh, every day except Sunday, which mm -hmm. is 12 to 6. And you have a festival, too, which people can uh, uh, check out in April of uh, the year, right? Yeah. In April uh, 5th of 2014, we'll be having our second annual Olive Festival. Okay. And we're really excited about it because we incorporate olives wine, great food, which mm -hmm. Central Texas is known for. Sure. And uh, we just have a great time. Music as well. Well, you have Why all different it? grades of olive oil, of course, uh, available, but you also have uh, uh, olive oil that's infused with flavors too, right? That's correct. We have uh, dry roasted garlic infused, we have a lemon infused, and we have a jalapeno infused. Now, that sounds interesting. The, the lemon one sounds most interesting to me because I have a, a dish that sounds like that would be perfect for. Now, uh, getting back to the homeowner, um, a lot of people are curious. Olive trees, for one thing, they're just beautiful plants. Absolutely. They they're have a evergreen. Beautiful, rugged character to them. What are some of the better varieties? If, you, if somebody does want to plant one in their backyard, what would you recommend? Well, I would highly recommend the Arbicina olive tree because it is self pollinizing or self-fertile. Okay, that makes a big uh, difference, obviously. The mission tree is also a good tree. It's very cold hardy. Um, and you'll get olives even without a pollinizer mm -hmm. there. It's always better to have two trees than one. Okay, um, just like most fruit trees, right? Exactly. Well, it, it, this is an exciting new day, really, for us in Central Texas to have this. You're located again in Dripping Springs. And I uh, hope people will visit you. Again, it's Texas Hill Country Olive Company, John Gambini. We really appreciate you coming. And we hope people will check you out either by visiting you uh, in Dripping Springs or uh, looking for you in uh, area uh, farmer's market. So thanks for being on Central Texas Gardener. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, I appreciate your time. All right. Take, take care. And coming up next is our friend Daphne.